Hey everyone, Travis here at the Curse offices in San Francisco, joined by the CEO, Uber. How's it going, Hello. Uber? I'm doing very good. How about you? Pretty good. So, uh, you know, I, I wanted to talk to you about Curse Voice because it has created one of the biggest stirs in the League of Legends community, not just in the esports side and competitive side, though there's a lot of discussion about it there, but also just across the entire, uh, entire spectrum of the community. Uh, now, first off, obviously, maybe my first question is just like, did you expect there to be like this much conversation and dialogue and maybe even controversy around it? I think a lot of the reason why uh, uh, there's a lot of discussion is because it's not open right now. Yeah. And the reason why it's not open is because we still have bugs to fix and we're really working as hard as possible. I mean, the team is really working about 14 hours a day right now uh, to get it out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be out soon. Uh, and. If you, if you don't have something that other people have, you know, the interaction is always going to be a bit weird. Maybe one of the biggest conversation pieces has been about the timers for Baron and Dragon. And uh, the, lots of people feel as though this is kind of like a weird unfair advantage for people who have a uh, cursed voice or that there's skill involved in keeping timers and all that kind of thing. How do you feel about the community reaction, or at least some, some parts of the community reaction, and feeling that that kind of thing is unfair? So it's, it's definitely one of the biggest topics, and, and um, uh, we've, we've gotten so many feedbacks about this. Um, so our, our philosophy is 70% um, of the company, you know, we have 120 employees, I would say 70% of the company actually play League of Legends. Uh, we are fans of the game. Uh, we love it. Uh, I have personally, you know, a couple thousand games. Mm -hmm. And um, the way our company was founded, you know, in World of Warcraft nine years ago, we looked at problem and we looked at things that just don't make sense. And for us, you know, keeping timers on Dragon and Baron is just not a fun mechanic. And it's not really about skill. You can activate timestamp in your chat and then you just, Every time someone talks, you have to scroll up again, and it's a, it's, it's a horrible uh, experience. And so our idea was, well, we're just going to fix it. And we, uh, uh, we did it. Um, I think uh, anyone that plays with our application will see that it improves quality of life, but it does not give an unfair advantage. On the Riot side, uh, they've made couple different statements I actually got banned in one of the regions. Uh, so there was actually a second statement on Latin America, which is like they won't ban people. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, this statement was lost in the sea of discussions right. that, that this created. So, so it's good there, but at the very least, like there was a weird moment where yeah. that happened. Uh, what do you think about the, specifically at least the Baron and Dragon timers from the, the Riot Games side? Like, are you concerned at all that they all they're talking about it, investigating and, and discussing it internally that they could come back and say like we don't want these in the game at all and this is somewhat unfair i'm not concerned about this uh, i think uh, riot is going to come out with uh, a policy about what is okay and what is not and i'm confident that you know what we have is going to be okay if they came back and they said we are not happy with the uh, baron and dragon timers would you guys at that point in time just say, okay, no problem, pull them out of the, the client and have no issue with it? So it's, it's, it's a hard question because this is very unlikely. Okay. Um, because the design team has posted that they feel that they don't want players to fight against the game, they want players to play the game, and they don't feel like this type of mechanics, um, like timing, you know, seven minutes or six minutes, are uh, good mechanics. Yeah. Um, so. You know, obviously we, we would not do something that the publisher is definitely against. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we've had millions of people registering accounts on our websites already for Curse Voice. And we feel that we also have to represent what the community wants. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I seriously feel right now that most people want this in the game. It sounds like talking to you, you're pretty confident that the design team isn't doesn't have an issue with this and and should it not let's say I, I would not be surprised if the design team start to implement timers in the game soon interesting okay well okay in this theoretical world that you're presenting if mm -hmm. they if they implemented timers for a dragon and baron uh you know one of the questions is like where do you guys go next because you guys have that are we going to see like red buff and blue buff timers pop up uh are we going to see like junglers have like a 
you, you check a box and, and they can see you know all their different camps or whatever so our our goal is not to um, our goal is not to have like the ultimate timer application that does everything for you that's right. not what we want to do uh, our goal is to improve quality of life uh, of the players and improve communication so we will focus on features where uh, you know the way we build this is okay what are the things that people ask all the time in chat and it's like when is your old app when is dragon when is baron these are like the three main things people ask for so we were like okay well we'll fix it because these are not you're not playing the game at this point you're just like asking people questions that prevent them from actually playing the game so um, that's, that's going to be our philosophy moving forward, you know. Uh, we um, um, will do features that improve communications. I think blue and red are no-brainer, obviously, in the future. Um, but we're not going to time every single thing on the map. Okay. No, that's not our plan. Uh, our plan is to create just a great communication platform. You are one of the first add-ons to really enter like the League of Legends scene. I mean, there's different examples of previous ones like LoL Replay or whatever, mm -hmm. but especially one of the first that is in the client and, and part of the interface. Do you see, as a company that, that was sort of founded on <laughs> having different applications and UI changes yep. and all this kind of stuff in the WoW client, do you see that once Riot releases the API down the road and all that kind of thing, that there will be maybe more of this kind of thing in the, in the game and lots of uh, UI well, elements? Well, I, I don't think so, and for a very simple reason. Um, when you look at the mechanics of League of Legends and the mechanics of World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft is a much deeper and complicated game with you know, hundreds of spells, um, new bosses all the time, new, uh, um, new PvE mechanics that uh, um, are, you know, they, they are they're usually very hard and, and add-ons were definitely a huge part of um, helping the players. In League of Legends, like when you look at what can be done, you know, like, I've seen people on the forum being like, oh, we'll see a DPS matter soon. Well, what, what would be the point of a DPS matter in, Le in League of Legends, yeah. you know? Uh, that would be no point because realistically, the, um, uh, the amount of damage you do is not, it does, does not translate as are you a good player or are you a bad player? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think the worry that people have about League of Legends becoming like an add-on central, I think it's unfounded and it's not going to happen. Okay. Well, now that we've we've discussed all the parts that are sort of in the game, let's take a step back and talk sure. about what Curse Voices is, is titled after, which is the actual communication software. Um, how satisfied are you right now with the the quality of that aspect of the the program and all that? So, it's uh, 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 definitely the the core of the the core of the application is a communication platform, and we feel that there just hasn't been a good uh, voice over IP application for gamers. Um, and also, one of the main reasons is actually a, a simple one. You know, games six, seven years ago, World of Warcraft, uh, MMOs, you knew everyone you were playing with, uh, you were unlikely to play with strangers. Uh, because the, the part of the game that required real communication, the raids, you know, you were in a guild, you knew the people, so you, you were on the same band server or you had them on Skype. Uh, and these were long-term relationships. League of Legends and MOBAs overall uh, promote you know, playing with people you don't know, um, having one or two minutes to talk before a game together, and uh, it's just a very different type of uh, uh, mechanics. And so the old school like Ventrilo and Skype, don't, they don't, they're not applicable anymore for this type of new games. And same for World of Tank, same for uh, I, I think a lot of the new games we'll see in the future, even Minecraft. Um, so we, what we're fixing here is a, a very easy way to chat with people. That's our goal. Okay. And we don't want you to have to add people as friend list. Uh, you can just share a link. They can join you. Uh, we will have friend list in the future. We'll have IMs. Uh, we'll have chat rooms. We'll have many other things. Uh, this is very much of a V1. Um, this is about nine months of work okay. uh, for us. Um, and we are, we're growing the team. Uh, we, are, uh, we just um, hired a Mac developer, so we'll have a Mac client also. Um, the voice part is, um, the, so the voice quality is extremely good. Uh, we use the latest codecs, um, the, latest, the best compression you can find. 
Uh, we actually have servers all over the world. Uh, we have a very uh, distributed architecture. Um, we can improve the capacity on any regions, you know, in just a matter of seconds. Um, everything is on the cloud. Uh, so it's, it's a very scalable application. And uh, the, the number one, uh, um, uh, the, the two, I guess number two or three feature, uh, um, bugs or, you know, requests that we get is, you know, improve stability. Uh, so that's the, that's our number one uh, uh, important uh, um, thing that our developers are working on right now. We uh, we don't want to crash your game. Uh, we want we don't want to impact your FPS. Um, so for ninety nine percent of the users right now, uh, it's it works perfectly, and for one percent of the users with like special drivers or you know graphic cards, we have some issues. So we, we want to fix this. Uh, so that's a big priority. Um, but it's only 1% of the users, so you know, we, we are working on other issues also. Uh, we also have uh, some people having uh, headset compatibility issues um, where it doesn't pick up your mic, or you unplug something, you replug it. Uh, so that's actually getting fixed uh, today or tomorrow. Okay. Now, you kind of hinted on this whenever you, you were discussing like the, the friends list and all that kind of thing, but last night over dinner with some of my colleagues talking about Chris Voice, one of the things that one of them said is that uh, he uses TeamSpeak, and he'll go into TeamSpeak just to hang out with friends, even whenever mm -hmm. he's not necessarily yeah. in a game. So, and he felt like that was something that Curse Voice was somewhat lacking, is just like a central place that he can press a button and be in like a voice chat room with yep. a bunch of people. Is that, you see that coming into Curse Voice yes. somewhat soon? Yes, uh, we will support uh, uh, this use case uh, in, the, in the next couple of months. Okay. It's, uh, we, we're starting with League of Legends, it's the biggest PC game in the world. Uh, our focus is anywhere outside of China. So uh, we have also servers in, you know, in Taiwan, we have servers in Australia, uh, in Brazil, um, Eastern, Western Europe, same East Coast, West Coast um, for the US. Um, so. Any reason why not, no China? China actually they, uh, has already a lot of good applications for gamers. Okay. Uh, so we just didn't feel like this would be um, something that would be very successful. At. You mentioned a Mac client as well. That was actually something that I've talked to several people about as, as well who have said, oh, it was available for Mac, and I realized it wasn't. Uh, is there any timeline that you can give us on Mac availability? Um, I think it's going to take a couple months at okay. least. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll, uh, on Mac, we're going to do the VoIP part first, and then we'll do uh, the overlay part after. Mm -hmm. Who do you consider to be, you know, your competitors in the space? I mean, you, you did mention like um, Ventrilo and Skype and all that kind of thing. Do you, you consider those guys, Teamspeak, et cetera? To be I mean, they they compete, but probably not too much uh, because gamers have very very specific needs, and so Skype is Skype has been you know used over the last couple of years because it's free. Um, it's uh, it's pretty easy to use, but over you know over time, the fact that they had to create like you know mobile application, they had to create uh, uh, they had to be on all the different platforms. The 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 software has become very cluttered, and it's actually uh, uh, it uses a lot of CPU resource because it's uh, peer to peer. Uh, we're not peer to peer, so um, when you host a Skype call, actually your PC is working pretty hard to to host it, mm -hmm. and this is why you know a lot of people complain. Hey. Skype is giving me a lot of FPS issues or RAM, you know, it's using all, all the, the RAM on my, on, my, on my PC, stuff like this. And then TeamSpeak and Ventrilo, do you consider those guys to be big competitors for you? I think TeamSpeak is more of the old era of MMO, you know, same for Ventrilo. Okay. And for League of Legends, and, and I think moving forward, I don't think they, I don't think these guys are going to be relevant for a long time. One thing that you had mentioned um, previously was the peer-to-peer Yes. Uh, situation with Skype, you guys don't do that. Uh, what and, and uh, obviously there's been a lot of discussion around like DDoSing and yep. IP vulnerabilities uh, using Skype. Uh, are you aware of anything in your technology that would allow for well, the, like that? So the only way uh, someone would be able to get someone someone's IP is like if we were actually com compromised, like our own servers. Right. But if you are in, you know, you know, I can't say that this can ever happen. Uh, right. Every company in the world has been compromised one day. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, what can I say is that if you actually join a call or talk to anyone in our platform, you know, there's no way they can get your IP. Uh, going a little bit back to, to Riot and their thoughts on all this stuff, have you guys had conversations with them uh, regarding the, the app, like directly with them? Yeah, we, uh, uh, so we, we didn't build this, you know, 
uh, hoping that you know, uh, this will be a big surprise for anyone in the future. Uh, we've actually been in beta uh, for about three months now. Okay. Uh, the beta was just small in the past. Uh, we went from you know, zero users to 7,000 to 40,000 to now um, uh, close to half a million active uh, beta testers. Uh, we have uh, another uh, nearly a, a million, another, another million people that actually went to the website that don't have access yet. Um, we had conversations in February uh, with Riot. Uh, we told them what we're doing, uh, why we're doing it. Uh, we were very transparent. And, and I think what happened is um, about 10 days ago, we increased the beta pool to. Uh, from 7,000 to you know, 50,000 people. Yeah. Uh, and this just increased the awareness of the application to a lot of people. And so, um, you know, Riot's a big, it's a big company. It's a, probably close to 2,000 people nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so some people, I'm sure a lot of people got surprised, but we, uh, we definitely had discussions before. And in the initial discussions, what was their reaction to you know, your unveiling of this app to them? There are two uh, uh, legitimate you know, questions in their mind. Uh, and in our mind, of course, because we are very, like, when, when we make the decisions of you know, adding timers or you know, matching people in the game and voice, like, we take in consideration a lot of things. You know, there is a lot of, uh, uh, um, there is a lot of positive aspect and, and very good aspect, but you have some uh, negative aspects also. Right. And in our opinions, the, the pros are much bigger than the cons. But you know, what happens when you match you know, random people in a game that are in the same game? You know, how do you help moderation? Um, how do you make sure that people don't abuse it? Um, how do we make sure that you know, uh, people don't create add-ons that give a big competitive advantage or cheats or anything like this? Like these are issues where we're very, very uh, uh, concerned about you know, as much as Riot. And uh, we, we, when we take these decisions, you know, we want to make sure that we communicate. Uh, we also talk to a lot of people outside the company, uh, the player base, you know, right. what, what do they feel? And um, uh, uh, the, these are discussions that you know, we, uh, um, we're very open to have with you know, Riot. And, we will build, uh, uh, um, they've, ob they've obviously learned a lot with League of Legends and how users interact together and yeah. toxic toxicity and all of this. And, you know, uh, we'll be very happy to implement some of the best practice okay. uh, in, in our uh, um, platform. You know, we want this to be a, a great communication platform. We don't want this to be a, a toxicity, toxicity central. Yeah. And we will support other games also. And, you know, we, we've had experience in the past um, managing a big client with a cursed client in, in World of Warcraft. Right. But this is uh, different and, and we, don't, we, we don't assume that we know everything. Uh, we we, we, uh, we want to learn and we want to, uh, we want to provide the best experience. Riot, and what, you, know, you kind of touched on this on, on what it's like. Uh, sometimes the community can be pretty toxic and to that end, you know, they have like behavioral scientists and all this on the, the player behavior team. Yep. And they've done a lot to moderate the communication that exists via, via things like the tribunal and, and all that. Uh, do you think that, like, talking to you, is there, it sounds like maybe there's some concerns around that. Maybe the player behavior team even is, is uh, you know, I'm, I guess I should ask, is the player behavior team, do you think, like, looking at this and being like, oh, God, is, the, yeah, is our think, ability to moderate communication going to, to leave us now? I think there are some worries about this. And, uh, you know, we were very much willing to uh, work with Riot and, and find uh, uh, ways where we can improve uh, yeah. our moderation and, and, and you know, if we have to ban people, we'll do it. Um, and we realize that, you know, we see the stake of having a, a voice account or less than having a game account. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to find mechanics, you know, that makes sense to, to fix that. Uh, but we... Uh, um, uh, we, we're very conscious about all of this, and 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 you know we are. We've been. You know, I started the company nine years ago, uh, playing World of Warcraft, and um, we we've been in this business for a long time. Uh, we understand how players think, we understand how publishers think, and and I think we could, we can be a great middleman. Yeah. We discussed that you know you felt as though Riot wasn't too concerned about the uh, Baron or Dragon timers. Uh, and you weren't concerned about them saying like, oh, we don't want this client around because of that. 
Is there any chance in your mind that Riot could say, we don't want this voice application so integrated into the client or anything like that and try to take measures to prevent that or ask you guys to at, least, at the very least like pull out some of the integration that we see in areas like Champion Select? It's possible. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I've never been able to really predict the future. So. Yeah, well, understandable. <laughs> but um, uh, I think uh, uh, um, I'm sure there will be more discussions in the future about you know, where this goes. And, and we, we're here to, um, we're in kind of like in this weird situation where we're here to support everyone. Mm -hmm. the, the players, you know, uh, the game companies also. And everyone worked together. Yeah. And we, uh, um, uh, we, we, we will take that in account. Yeah. One of the biggest things though, and you talked about how you can easily expand yeah. the system and you've, you've got a, a running all over the place and all that kind of thing um, for capacity and all that. But this is a completely free yes. uh, application. Uh, Skype, I think, is able to mitigate some of the costs of that via like the P2P uh, system. You guys don't do that. I have to imagine that as you guys scale up and have more and more and more people playing, the costs will get larger and larger, and at this point, you guys aren't, from what I can tell, making any money on, on the application. So what are the plans for monetization around the product? A couple of things to take in account. Uh, the first one, um, we compress about four to five times more than Skype. So the bandwidth usage is actually really small. Uh, uh, you, could, you, you could nearly run uh, Curse Voice on the modem at this point. Uh, so. Uh, very very small uh, usage um, on uh, in bandwidth. Uh -huh. If you don't mind, just me cutting in. Do you guys change? Because whenever I've I've listened to it, it sounds it's like a decent quality. Uh, does do you guys change the compression based on like the bandwidth that you guys are seeing or anything like that, or just to? No, it's it's fixed. Okay. Uh, but it's very minimal. Okay. Uh, and we, uh, um, uh, you know, audio compressing and and uh, audio technologies have improved a lot in the last five ten years. And the, pro the, the problem with like a Skype or um, anyone having mobile applications is if you change the codec and the compression on desktop, then you actually brick for everyone except if they update to the new client. Right. But the problem is when you're Skype, you have a Mac client, a desktop client, a uh, um, you know, Windows client. Uh, you, have, uh, you have iPad, you have Android, you have, and then you have so many different platforms you have to support that uh, uh, you can't really do big updates anymore. And so Skype's running on a very old codec at this point. And so the, the cost of voice is not, I, I wouldn't say it's cheap, you know, it's right. definitely, uh, it's, um, it would be expensive. But uh, it's not as bad as it used to be. And for this, we're able to provide a completely free service. And we, we will have monetization opportunities in the future. Yeah. But when, when it comes to communication, when it comes to talking to people, when it comes to any game integration we will do, uh, it will always be free. Do you have plans yet on what that monetization might be? If you look at uh, how communication platforms are monetized in Asia, uh, you have like, you know, the, the Smileys, you have uh, um, special emoticons, um, you have premium memberships uh, for, you know, um, um, some special features, uh, but it's not nothing, you know, that any users would like absolutely need. Uh, just nice to have and quality of life features okay. that we'll have. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, this has worked well for, uh, for a lot of, uh, especially on mobile applications. And um, uh, But our goal is uh, we want to build a real-time platform uh, for services. And you know, voice is a first step into real-time. And we, we, you know, I can think of many other features that would be uh, great to have in a desktop application. Because you know, the, in our application, everyone is logged in, everyone is ready to interact. So we have a lot of ideas in, in, in services and, and um, uh, products we can uh, bring to them uh, that they will be willing to purchase or buy or, you know, or interact. So it's m many, many other, many, there will be many uh, avenues we will experiment monetization. We don't have fixed plan yet yeah. uh, because we're still thinking about it. But uh, um, monetization is not, is not my worry. Um, right now our number one objective is 
There is about 100 million hardcore PC gamer out of China. I want to get all of them on our voice platform. Uh, any timelines on any of the micro or any of the monetization options for you guys? It's not going to be anytime soon. Okay. Yeah. Any hints as to what the like additional features that you could see involving a, a, like a desktop client? Or so we want to make you know our our, our uh, application the the best application if you play uh, League of Legends. Then we'll make it the best if you play World of Warcraft, uh, if you play Hearthstone, if you play Diablo or other, you know, World of Tank, right. you know, these other games. Um, friendless is definitely key to that um, because we uh, we won't be able to. We won't have people to have their own chat rooms. We won't have, like, you know, some of the things you were talking about them, about the quality of life of having a TeamSpeak server, for example. Like, we can recreate a lot of that easily. Um, we probably won't recreate it the same because um, uh, you know we think we can provide better experience. Uh, but the um, uh, I would say we have a ton of work to do just on the communication and supporting other games. You know, in the next year or two. What What is next after League of Legends? So it's, it's still debating it. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be either uh, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, World of Tank, or Diablo. Okay. Yeah. I do want to just sort of ask you at the very end of this, like, with all these features coming in uh, and sort of this idea where you can see a cursed voice expanding, is there a concern that down the road we can see sort of an issue that you saw, you mentioned with Skype, where they've added so many different things that it, it becomes a, a lot more clustered and, and a little bit more higher maintenance? That's a good question. Uh, so, our focus is about uh, PC gamers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's our uh, um, PC is growing. Uh, it's actually, uh, uh, I read a, a study last week that um, as of last month, uh, PC gaming is actually a bigger market in the worldwide than console gaming. Um, and especially thanks to mobile games, because one of the reasons is um, mobile games, the, 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 requir the, the system requirements are so low that you can have a five-year-old PC and you can still play it. Yeah. So it has really expanded the pool of possible PC gamers, uh, which is great. And so our focus is PC. Uh, PC is also an open platform, well, PC and Mac. Uh, and these are open platforms uh, where we can do a lot of things. And um, uh, we, th there is just so many opportunities that we can work on that I, I just don't see us doing you know, other things for a long time. Okay. Hey, uh, I do want to, the other final thing, sorry, I have two. Sure. Uh, I guess I actually almost forgot about this, but your, you recently uh, dropped uh, the Curse Gaming, or the yes. Curse Gaming group uh, split off, and, and now Steve owns that uh, liquid. And, uh, you know, in the past we've seen maybe some, add, you know, you guys did add-ons or whatever, but this is maybe um, since the Curse client, <coughs> like the first sort of platform situation that you guys have going on, mm -hmm. you guys do a lot of content. Do you see yourself doing more of these um, you know, clients and that kind of thing in the future. If you look at the things we've done the last couple of years, uh, we launched our YouTube program, uh, which is basically a platform to help uh, content creators on YouTube to monetize, you know, get known. Uh, we support them. We also try to promote them on our own sites. Um, so this is more like a platform business. Okay. Um, the, the voice client is also a platform business where we're here to support everyone. And um, the the core business of the company right now is still uh, our website business. Uh, we do we do about 1.1 billion page view a month. Uh, last month we had 43, 44 million uh, users uh, coming to our websites. Um, so it's um, that's what you know make us leave at the company. Yeah. But uh, we want to stay in gaming as a company, and we've reached kind of like okay, how much can we grow more? on the web, probably not that much, except if there is a new game coming out. Um, we have a great team. They uh, will be able to create content around any new big games coming out. But uh, um, we, uh, we see the technology aspect as uh, easier to scale and to grow worldwide, because um, content has more local than, well, than uh, uh, technology. Technology, you know, we can launch We've been able to create an application in nine months that can launch worldwide. And this is only technology can allow you to do stuff like this. Yeah. And so um, 
we will move more into the technology space uh, in the future than in the content space. Well, hey, thank you so much for yeah, the thank interview. You. Very good to, uh, to get some answers, I think, and hear some stuff about Curse Voices. It's such a huge yeah. topic of discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to thank you, you know, all of you guys that have uh, uh, applied for the beta and are excited for it. And sh everyone should be able to get a, a, a key uh, very, very soon. Yeah, is that, does that mean we're going to see it come out of beta soon? Very soon, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's a matter of days. Okay, matter of days. Yeah. You can check out the rest of our eSports coverage at ongamers.com.